service. We're excited to see you and have so much to share with you. But before we do that, we need you to stand up, make some room, because we're gonna jump into some worship. Hey kids, let's get on our feet and clap our hands as we sing, I'm in love with Jesus. Let's get off our feet. Ever been knocked down? And feel like you can't get back up? You're not alone and God wants to help. God is strong and faithful in our lives. Because of his plan for us, 
we can bounce back from whatever knocks us down. Bounce back. Get back up again. took a lot out of me. Hi kids, I'm so glad you're back as we continue our series, Bounce Back. In this series, we're talking about resilience, which is getting back up when something gets you down. In life, you might get knocked down from time to time, but when we put our trust in God, we find the strength we need to get back up again. God is faithful and strong, always working in our lives. Because of Jesus, we can bounce back from whatever knocks us down and complete the mission God has for us. But first, let's bounce into the big answer. What is the big answer? It's the answer to the big question. This is the question you should get from that important adult in your life, and that is, what did you learn in Kids Church today? Our big answer for today is, trusting God can help you get back up. And our memory verse for this series comes from the book of Isaiah. And it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Today, we're looking at a part of the book of Hebrews that explains what it means to have faith. Faith. You, I mean, you probably heard that word a lot in church, right? Have faith. Faith in God. Faith while you pray. Keep the faith. I mean, having faith, really, it just means believing. And that's a big part of what gives us resilience. When you have faith in God, when you trust God, that's what gives you the strength to bounce back up and keep going. And we don't just have to go by what we see here and now. We can also look backwards. I mean, go to the beginning of the Bible and see how people had faith in God all throughout history. Hebrews 11 is something known as the Hall of Faith chapter in the Bible, or it's the heroes of faith, because it's a list, a lot of people who had incredible faith in God. So let's start out by seeing what it really means to have faith, according to this chapter of Hebrews. In Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. It is what the ancients were commended for. Did you catch that? Faith is being confident of what you hope for, and it's being sure of what? What we don't see. It means that we trust God and believe in God is always good. We believe that even when we don't understand what's happening right now in our lives. And that's what it's all about with the people mentioned in the book of Hebrews. These men and women had struggles in their lives, just like us. And they couldn't always see the bigger story. But still, they trusted God no matter what. With God's help, these heroes of faith got back up when life knocked him down. Like for example, Abraham. Abraham had faith, so he obeyed God. God called him to go to a place that he would receive later as his own. So he went. I mean, he didn't even know where he was going. But because of his faith, he made his new home in the land that God had promised him. And Abraham was way past the time where he could have children. But many children came from that one man. They were known as many as the stars in the sky, or they were as many as the grains of sand in the seashore. No one could count them. Abraham really was a hero in faith. He followed God's call to go to the new land, even though he didn't know where God was leading him and, or what to expect when he got there. Abraham and his wife Sarah went on to have a child named Isaac, even though they were pretty old. And through Abraham, God promised to bless the entire world. Let's talk about another hero mentioned in the book of Hebrews, Joseph. Now, Joseph had faith. 
He spoke to the people of Israel about how they would leave Egypt someday. Joseph had faith and trusted God even through the ups and the downs of life. He ended up saving an entire nation plus his own family from starvation. And Joseph believed that one day God would lead the Israelites out of Egypt into a land that God prepared for them. And of course, God did, up, did end up leading the Israelites out of Egypt through our next hero, Moses. Because of his faith, Moses left Egypt. It wasn't because he was afraid of the king's anger. He didn't let anything stop him. That's because he saw the God who can't be seen. The people of Israel had faith. They could pass through the Red Sea, they, and they went through, which was on dry land. I mean, did you hear what I said? Moses led God's people out of Egypt and through the Red Sea. He had a big time faith for sure. In this amazing chapter of the book of Hebrews, we read about heroes like Abraham, Joseph, and Moses. We read about other heroes like Noah, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, and many more. And as we read at the end of the chapter in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39, it says, all, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Abraham, Joseph, Moses, and others. These men and women were heroes, but they're also just ordinary people like you and me. They did amazing things because of their faith in God. They chose to trust God and even believe that God was working in their lives, even if they couldn't always see it. When we choose to trust God, when we choose to get back up, when we get knocked down, what is that? Uh-oh. Ah! We can continue the story of these amazing people from history. If we think about all that God did through their lives, it makes us realize that God can do amazing things in our lives too. Our job is simple. We can choose to trust. If you want to live with faith and trust, it can really help to look back at what God has already done. I mean, we have to look at what God has done through people in the Bible. And we can also think about what God has done in our own lives. I mean, think about all the times God has come through for you before. I mean, that will help you live with trust because you believe God has a bigger plan and that God's plan is always good. So let's remember what our big answer says. Trusting God can help you get back up. God loved us so much that he chose to send Jesus to take care of our sins. And all we have to do is accept that gift and invite him into our hearts. Now sin is what keeps us separate. Until we say we're sorry for our sins and ask Jesus into our hearts, we aren't part of God's family. So I want everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. And if you're in here and you'd like to make Jesus your best friend and start following him, would you just say this prayer with me? Just repeat after me and say, Dear God, I believe you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. Jesus, I give you my life. Be my Lord and my very best friend. In your name I pray, amen. We love you so much and we can't wait to see you next week. I don't know where that thing came from, so I am getting out of here. It's time for Memory Verse Breakdown! Hey kids, today we're gonna break down this week's Memory Verse. Are you ready? Okay, here's this week's Memory Verse. You think you got it? Try saying it out loud. All right, let's take some words away. You 
You think you still got it? Try saying it out loud again. All right, let's bring those words back and see how you did. Did you get it right? Awesome. Well, that's this week's Memory Verse Breakdown. How'd you do? Memory Verse Breakdown! It's time to play the exploding fruit game. Everybody stand up and get ready to choose your favorite fruit. For cantaloupe, stand on the left side of the room. For watermelon, stand in the middle. For honeydew, stand on the right. Choose wisely, because if your fruit explodes, you're out of the game! chose watermelon, you are out. This time we have a pineapple, a coconut, and a watermelon. You know what to do. chose the pineapple, then you're out. And for the last round, we have a coconut, a cantaloupe, and a pineapple. Good luck! chose the coconut, I'm afraid you're out. Thanks for playing with us. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for being with us today. Before you leave, have that important adult in your life. Go to livechurchgreenbay.com slash kids where you can grab our Kids Connect card. There you can discuss our big answer, memory verse, and even more. We love you so much and have a great week. Yeah. <laughs>